Hi, everyone. We've been hearing a lot about transformations these days. There's so many different types, and it's hard to understand how they're different and how they're related. Today, we are going to break down business transformation with Randy Hale and Richard Dolman. Welcome, y'all. Thanks, Rez. Hi, I'm Randy. I'm a transformation coach, been focusing on helping organizations get to their version of better uh, through a number of tools and techniques over about the last dozen years or so. Hi, I'm Richard Dolman. I'm an enterprise transformation coach um, specializing in helping individuals and organizations tap into their potential. Well, we are going to dive right into it. So first question, what is business transformation? So business transformation from, from my perspective is first off, very holistic. And a lot of organizations are lacking focus in some of the areas, but ultimately it's about defining what this better state is that they're pursuing and looking at all of the aspects, the entire operating model, how funding investment decisions are made, hiring practices, um, compensation, incentives, bonuses, um, role structures. Um, and notice I haven't mentioned anything about technology or process yet. Certainly that's all a part of it, but it's, it's a very complex space. And I think that's one of the challenges uh, where a lot of organizations have fallen short. Richard, what would you add? Yeah, I'd agree. It's uh, it's certainly challenging. You know, the the term business transformation carries a lot of potential sub definitions, right? Um, the transformation word itself is really about kind of fundamentally changing uh, who we are, how we how we operate, etc. Um, and I think most organizations are finding that they're being confronted um, by internal needs, external forces, et cetera. And the need for change and transformation is, is growing and is present. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of, of talk around different types of transformations. Uh, I think they all have some, you know, similar factors as Randy just mentioned. Um, you know, there's not a single clear definition of that, but, you know, li literally looking at the need to change um, and to be able to thrive is, I think, paramount these days. So when you're looking at things like changing the funding model and um, hiring structures and organizational structures, that sounds like a huge investment of time and um, resources and can cause a lot of, you know, definitely a lot of changes. Why would an organization want to undertake something like this? Yeah, it it can be and typically is a huge investment. And you know, for some organizations, it's not an option, right? So if if we're trying to adapt to a dynamic market, for example, if if the market is moving faster than we are, we're losing market share, we're being threatened by competitors, we're losing customers. Right, that is compelling purpose that that really kind of forces our hand as an organization, um, needing to find competitive advantage, etc. So, you know, the why is often you know discovered through understanding what's really driving the organization change right now. Um, and Rez, I think you hit on a, an interesting point, right? The investment that's required in in real change in an organization. Uh, particularly an organization uh, that is of of large size or spans the globe, et cetera, is is really important. And I think fundamentally, a lot of organizations, the mistake they're making is they're undercutting that investment, right? They're looking at these these drivers, these things that they need to do as projects that they're going to have a, a very finite amount of funding. They've got very limited uh, staff aka resources to be able to apply to this. And I think that understanding that investment and understanding where all of their investments are going um, is a critical blind spot in a lot of organizations. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, what, I, what I would add to that is you invest because 
what got you here is not going to get you there. Everybody's heard that, that phrase. And if you want different results, you want improved performance for your business, you want improved outcomes, you need to make changes in, in a number of areas to be able to get those improved results. And one of the things that I'll sort of <clears throat> throw out as, as something that I pretty closely correlate when we start using the transformation word is the, the term operating model. And I see a lot of different organizations with a lot of different you know perspectives on what operating model is, what it means, whether it's in scope or not. And um, you know, within the not too distant past, I had a conversation with a VP of strategy and transformation who in the same conversation made two very conflicting statements. One, our CEO and CIO have said getting Agile right is our top priority as a company. Later in that same conversation, I also heard, but we're not looking to make changes to operating model right now. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. talk about business transformation. That's what we're talking about. Like looking at the entire picture it's complex. It's an extremely complex space. The other thing I would add to Richard's points is most organizations, at least that, that I've worked with, sort of have this mindset that their operating model is, is almost something that they rent versus something that they own. They go engage a top strategy firm to define the next version of their operating model, and they get great insights they get really great guidance but the thing that's missing is the the, the own dynamic you know mm -hmm. yeah. uh, this is this is version 17 of our company operating model and what we think is important is working within the organization with leaders to really build that that ownership dynamic and really understand how do you continually adapt and evolve your operating model? To me, that's really the ultimate goal of business transformation. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I like what you're talking about also, Randy, around the, the rent versus own. I mean, too often, um, and I, one of our colleagues just made this comment uh, yesterday, I believe, with a new client of, you know, just tell us what to do and, and we'll go do these things. And while I appreciate kind of the the base uh, intent behind that, um, that is a trigger for me, uh, particularly when we're talking about true transformational efforts to to really transform the way we operate. Um, if we're simply saying, just tell us what to do, we'll go do it, or <laughs> sometimes we even get, just do it for us, just go implement these changes for us. Um, that's that's a renting mentality, and that's not going to create sustainability in most cases. It's not going to create real resilience as an organization. Um, the threats that organizations are facing shouldn't be, you know, DEF CON whatever. They shouldn't be really uh, putting us to the brink of chaos. We should be able to look at these things, anticipate what we're being able to confront as an organization, and then start making those changes or start thinking about those changes and and often it's it's either that rent versus own mentality or it's we need to change but we can't change certain things so whether it's our operating model our hierarchical structures our core processes etc so one of the first you know ways to break through that is to make sure that you know we're not limiting ourselves to the so-called transformation and we are open to all of the potential opportunities that are in front of us. But that's hard because we've got we've got things that we have to accomplish. We've got expectations that we still have to meet mm -hmm. while we're doing this in parallel. So, Randy, you brought up kind of the agile word, right? So we've heard agile transformation. We've heard product transformations, digital transformations. Is that all kind of within business transformation? How is everything kind of related uh, to this this big word, yeah, I, I think it, it it's all a bunch of uh, branding malarkey. If you ask me, <laughs> I mean, 
at at the core, the, the underpinnings are the same no matter what you call it. From my perspective, it's just, you know, who has what core competencies and what do they want to focus on more? What do they want to dial up, you, you know, in terms of their, their marketing uh, focus? You know, how I would differentiate just off the cuff is digital transformation in my experience tends to be a bit more technology led it's more about you know infrastructure cloud enablement how do we you know build the flexibility so that we can do things quickly those are all really important capabilities you know how do we um, get the most out of automation certainly looking at process how do we accelerate and, and improve processes and and remove waste. <clears throat> and that's a very important part of the picture, um, but it, it's it's not everything. Um, similarly, from a product transformation perspective, you know, organizations who focus there are kind of leading with the, the customer centricity aspect of it, uh, looking at things like, how are you organized around delivery to your customers. And again, those are all really important things. Um, agile transformation, a lot of times what we see is it's viewed as go do this thing with the teams, make the teams better when, you know, the real opportunity lies beyond the, the team level. So those are a few different ways I would sort of differentiate uh, the different flavors of transformation. Richard, what would you add? Yeah, I agree for sure. Um, digital transformations, agile transformations, product transformations, um, obviously they, they tend to focus on specific areas, but I think they have a common thread, which is again, uh, either ignored or just not well understood in a lot of organizations. Um, and I've been coaching and, and training on this for many, many years that, you know, let's talk about agile transformations. Uh, even today, uh, after many, many years of experience working with many, many organizations around so-called agile transformations, it's still heavily viewed as an IT thing. Similarly, digital transformations get often relegated to IT. Although I have worked with a few organizations that see the uniqueness of that and, and kind of uh, can, can separate that a little bit. But agile transformation, for example, have always been about business uh, success, business continuity, satisfying the customer. So at the core, these are all business transformations. And the mistake I think gets made is that these get relegated to an IT thing, or as as Randy mentioned, we still see a lot of so-called agile transformations. Just go do this to the teams. As long as the teams are doing this agile thing, we're done. And I think while the focus area may vary, whether it's product, digital, et cetera, the core underlying uh, theme needs to be that this is about uh, building and responding to the business needs. And the point of that being is that we need business stakeholders to be alongside of us who those of us that are you know mm -hmm. helping organizations drive change but we need real business stakeholder engagement not just sponsorship not just uh we will show up at a demo every once in a while when when you have something to show us but we need real business leadership to engage and and we're seeing that uh, again still today in a lot of these transformations they get relegated to you know, a department or a PMO or some other group to go manage the thing rather than really understanding the, the holistic uh, opportunity here, as Randy mentioned earlier. Yeah, so one thing you... I, would, I want to quickly add yeah. to, to what Richard said, because I, I like that point a lot. Um, the whole partnership between IT and the business mm -hmm. I can only think of one case in the 12 plus years I've been focusing in, in, in this domain where it was the business that, that brought me in. Um, the, the phrase I like to use with IT, IT tends to have this um, 
we're here to serve the business mentality. And that leads them to want to go to the business with a bunch of answers that says, right. here's the plan. Here's exactly what we want to, to do. Here's how you plug in. And the phrase that I use when I'm engaging with IT is, look, you can take that approach. That approach is you are doing this to them. In my experience, it is way more impactful to engage your business as partners, set a directional intent. We believe that moving in this direction will help us collectively improve and we want to figure it out together. So that's one of my my taglines I use a lot is yeah. do it with the business, not to the business. Yeah, that's that's a great point, right? I, I think the intent of we, we serve the business is admirable, but to your point, Randy, it often manifests in some anti-patterns that um, aren't necessarily healthy and, and balanced. Um, you know, another cliche I hear that I uh, frankly roll my eyes at is, you know, from, from the business stakeholder perspective of, well, this isn't their day job. And, you know, it absolutely is their day job, right? Again, uh, any transformation that we're talking about here that that is helping us survive or thrive as an organization, by definition, is our day job. And it, it, it comes back to the investment point that you brought up earlier, Rez, is that that investment is not just a financial investment. It's not just about hiring consultants or uh, buying technology or implementing tools. It's an investment in people's time and energy and passion. And if our business stakeholders are treated as uh, simply receivers of things that we do versus uh, partners that are at the table and engaged in this, then we're simply at risk of, of sub-optimizing said transformation. So it sounds like all of these different types of transformations are definitely related, um, if not one and the same, as Randy said. Some of it, a lot of it is branding, marketing, malarkey. Um, and so they can build on each other, but can there be too many transformations mm -hmm. happening at one time? What are y'all's yeah. thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I I use the term change fatigue or for this topic, we'll rebrand it as transformation fatigue. So I definitely think that there's there's a risk of uh, taking on too much as an organization, right? Um, and as we talked earlier, the the impetus, the motivation for taking on a business transformation uh, may be driven by some internal need or it may be some external force. So that's important to, to acknowledge mm -hmm. that if, if it's something that's being driven externally, um, that, that could be from regulatory changes or market or competitor changes, then we likely don't have a choice, right? Those, those, are, those are things that, are, that we are confronted with and we have to deal with these if we expect to survive and thrive. If we're talking about internal needs, then we have more discretion, right? We can choose is this really a priority? We can we can calibrate the pace at which we do these things because it's internal and it's and it's ostensibly something that we have choice at. Uh, the reality is that virtually every organization today, I believe, is confronting more than one business transformation need. Uh, they can work together. They can build on each other. I think they have some common complementary components to them. Mm -hmm. um, starting with culture and culture change. And, you know, if if we expect to bring real transformation and change to our business, to our organization, um, this is not just about implementing processes or implementing something. We have to start to get people's mindsets to shift towards a new reality. We have to uh, understand our cultural dynamics and our cultural orientation so we can move in the direction that we need to move. If Randy and I are both leaders in the same organization, but maybe we've got completely different leadership styles and we have completely different interpretations of our cultural orientation and we're going to lead and respond, then we have to be able to deal with that. We, we're going to have to understand the, the tension that might exist between 
you know, a culture in one part of the organization and a cultural norm in another part of the organization. So that mindset shift and that cultural dealing with cultural change, which we can't manufacture, that has to evolve over time, I think is central to any type of transformation that we're having to deal with. Um, and so if we're dealing with multiple transformations in parallel, um, we can actually leverage both of those in a positive sense if we if we're bringing that mindset shift and we're working on that cultural change. Um, and if we're talking about uh, team empowerment, a very common theme behind agile transformations is we want to create more autonomy and empower our teams, whether we're mm -hmm. talking about software development teams, marketing teams, uh, talent resource, uh, HR teams. If we want to truly bring change uh, that is systemic and sustainable, we have to create team empowerment. And I think that's another common thread across any real transformation that we're looking at in an organization today. So find a common thread, manage it that way. Yeah. Yeah, well, well said. Uh, I'll share an anecdote where digital transformation meets agile transformation. I, I've worked in a, a couple of different scenarios where there were sort of parallel efforts. Um, one digital transformation flavor, much more focused on cloud enablement and, and DevOps, and then an agile transformation happening sort of in parallel, focused more on how are, how are we building better software and without the right kind of overarching oversight and coordination, and those two things were conflicting in, in a lot of different ways. We had the digital transformation get kicked off with a very traditional approach to you know continuing to have functionally siloed teams and trying to bring new capabilities to bear, but managing it through a series of dependencies and hiring more and more project managers to coordinate the dependencies among these different cloud teams. And it was a little bit of insanity because when we came across that area, you know, with a more of an agile transformation focus around how do we focus on the customer? How do we build, you know, cross-functional teams that minimize the dependencies? You know, we ran into that head on and, you know, sort of like, well, we were here doing it this way first. You're going to have to wait until we get through, uh, you know, this uh, wave of capabilities that we're, we're trying to, to build out even though there was a ton of opportunity for them to make some relatively minor shifts to, to improve the way they were delivering. But, you know, just two different leaders driving two different agendas, not, not fully aligned. <clears throat> that kind of dynamic um, shows up in a lot of different ways uh, in a lot of organizations. So yeah, holistic is, is definitely the way to go, even though that can be, scary because of the of the mm, scope mm -hmm. it, yeah it as i said earlier it's very complex but it's better to to map out and understand the complexities and chart a path through it in, in my opinion than to overly focus and and sub-optimize yeah and you know one other point if i could add to that of are they complementary right can if we're if we're taking on multiple transformation initiatives in parallel um how do they work or if if all of a sudden we've got chaos in one area does that mean we hit hit the end on pull the end on cord hit the stop button over here so that we can go focus over there and a couple of things that that i always like to remind leadership about is you know we need to develop a sense of urgency around these because again if if we're trying to bring about change it has to have compelling purpose and, and we have to really understand why are we why are we doing this right why are we bringing all of these uh resources again people resources financial etc to bear to do this and it also requires patience because true transformational change is not happening overnight it doesn't happen by just going through some training. It doesn't happen by just spending a few weeks or a few months doing different things. True transformation takes time. 
And, and so we need to have patience, but also that sense of urgency and balance that. And how these might work together, um, Randy and I have seen this play out many, many times when we start a, an agile transformation working with an organization, um, oftentimes we'll be confronted with some competing priorities. And, and again, we have to hit the pause button. Well, we have to slow down this agile transformation because we have this other burning platform over here. Well, the reality is, is that by doubling down on our agility allows us to better respond to these other demands. So if we're trying to succeed with the digital transformation or we're trying to succeed with a product transformation or, or pick your transformation, mm -hmm. having the ability to build more agility into our organizational DNA is how we're going to succeed on these other fronts. So there, there's certainly complementary components. And then we build on these as we go. And it is complex. And it's hard for a lot of leaders to be able to see through that complexity because they have expectations that, that they need to meet as well. So having the right type of, of coaching support and the right type of uh, you know, a guiding coalition that's going to understand how all these fit together, I think is, is really critical for organizations to develop. So if... Last question for for the time being, if an organization wanted to undertake a transformation, what's the first step? Yeah, I can I can take a crack at that. For, for me, it step step absolute step one is why align on why. You know, I use the the phrase a lot that organizations want to get better. They want to improve some aspect of how they're how they're performing. Get clear on what better looks like, because there's a lot of different tools and a lot of different approaches, a lot of different ways that you can optimize things in in different sequences. Uh, there's not one universal recipe. So align on your why and focus on that. And then the the next step, from my perspective, is Stay zoomed out for for a moment. You know, don't zoom in too quickly. There's all kinds of things that it's very easy to jump right into, but at least take a beat and look at it from the forty thousand foot level and say, what are all the things that are part of this complex, you know, model that that makes up our our company? All of the different aspects of it, and really. Ask yourself, uh, you know, as an organization, what aren't we willing to change? Because odds are, if if there's anything on that list, you're 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 going to be limited in the benefits that you're able to achieve. And mm -hmm. you know, focusing on those two things, uh, I think, are are the right place to start. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's that's always a good starting point, right? Understanding, you know, why we uh, think we need to do this. And I referenced earlier, you know, whether it's an internal need versus an external factor. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, I wanted to make a quick reference to the uh, Harvard Business Review article, Rez, that you shared with us. And uh, one thing that, that I really liked about that article is it talks about a, a, a way to kind of categorize the the source of or or the um, impetus of that change right so if it's coming from from an external mm -hmm. there's there's certain things that we might need to understand about that versus if it's something that's that's coming from an internal need um, so as as Randy said understanding the why but also really understanding what we're dealing with right as you as you talk about that why um, and then you also need to be realistic about all of the other competing priorities you had. As we talked earlier about uh, these things, maybe you may be running multiple transformations in parallel in your organization. They can, they can be supportive of each other. They can build on each other. Um, but really getting uh, beyond that why and then understanding what's the driver here, then we really need to also get a, a guiding, a strong guiding coalition to lead this. Um, because again, transformation doesn't happen overnight. It's going to take a lot of, of time. It requires uh, essentially building a volunteer army within our organization to be able to take on change. 
Um, and if we understand the, the base characteristic of what we're being confronted with and understanding how that aligns with our other priorities and then build that, that understanding that this is going to take time and we need real leadership to, to take ownership of this, not just somebody's going to sponsor it and, and fund mm -hmm. it, but someone's really going to uh, lead and lead people through change. And uh, getting those foundational uh, building blocks in place is really critical. Yeah, the one, the one final thought <clears throat> that, that you spurred for me, Richard, is getting clear on the, the intent from, from a sustainability perspective, mm -hmm. because I've, I've seen a lot of go fast transformations that can get an initial lift faster, but the ceiling on what's possible is is pretty much in every case I've seen is lowered. So that that's a cost. And what often happens when you err on the side of going fast is you lose the sustainability. Mm -hmm. So really taking a look in the in the organizational mirror at are you know are we wanting a, a, a rapid cure or are we wanting a sustainable cure which and how do we want to balance that i think that's an important part of the conversation yeah i agree i agree and you know we have to calibrate the pace of change at times right so we we may want to go fast we may we may need to go fast because that external force uh, also brings with it some some time box constraint or something like that. So the need to uh, respond quickly or the opportunity to maybe take a slower pace, um, understanding those is is also important. Um, I believe that some forward momentum is always important. So if we have to throttle it back a little bit. Um, because we're dealing with competing priorities and we don't want to burn our people out. And we, we're not just trying to go fast and throw, you know, throw some gasoline on a wildfire. Um, we need to understand that we can, we can calibrate the pace of change, particularly for those transformational efforts that are internally driven. Because again, that, theoretically, we've got more discretion there. So we can, we can calibrate this. And organizations in general aren't always that good at, at being able to recognize how to, you know, how to calibrate the pace because mm -hmm. everything has to get done. We've got limited budgets. We've got limited time. And, and what we end up doing is we just keep uh, spreading out our effectiveness and, you know, overburdening our, our people. And, and that includes from senior leadership down to team level. It's not just team level individuals that get overburdened and burned out. You know, leaders are juggling too much. Leaders are trying to solve too many problems all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so the, the art of figuring out how do we calibrate this? How do we work together um, to uh, kind of manage the pace of change and, and knowing where and when uh, to, to speed it up or, or where and when to kind of slow it down a little bit? I think that's a critical capability that leadership uh, pretty much all the way through the organizational stack that we need to learn that capability and continuously, uh, you know, communicate, this is what we're doing and why we're doing it. Well, thanks y'all. I think that was a great conversation. We're going to continue to have these conversations as we kind of explore how organizations can deliver, or deliver value faster and more efficiently. If you like what you're hearing, hit subscribe or join our newsletter so that you catch the next video. Until next time, thanks y'all. Thank you. Thank you.